again, this one's to symbolic primarily, but anybody can jump in. Symbolic, I'm having an awful lot of trouble getting the famous, should be famous, symbolic nine to balance on the question of evolution. Now, I've come up with three different flavors of evolution, though. So that might be worth going through. Let's start with the whole question of evolution by itself. Forget the God thing, all right? We're just talking numbers. And in numbers, it's like accounting. you got to track back to source. If i got a December argument and I can't track back to January 1, then something that happened back in January, for example, might change the whole story, okay? So with the evolution problem, I'm always stuck with what's the first cause? No matter what flavor of evolution I come up with, I've got to have a first cause. That first cause has got to be a stasis of some kind, something that always was. And you and I have talked a lot about this. And the most logical, non-theistic first cause would be a set of laws that always just were. Okay, but if I say that, then I can't be talking about the current construct of evolution. Because the current construct of evolution is essentially not alive. This current construct of evolution basically says everything came out of matter and energy, and more or less posits that some form, probably energy, was just always there. Okay, but how did it magically change to become all these things that are now? See, I can't explain that. That's a January 1st problem to get to the December 31 where we are now. But, if I say that it's not two things, you know, two sides of a coin, matter and energy, but three, with the third thing being a life force that has all those laws in it, then I don't have a problem, I mean, logically, I don't have a problem saying that things could evolve from that, whether quickly or slowly or whatever way, theoretically, before I get into the details. So we have to start with three. All right, it's really matter and energy, which are two sides of the same thing. And then a third thing, which is this life force. And we'll pause it for the sake of argument to get to step one in your construct. That the face of this developing concept, or what do we want to call it? The absinthe, the evidence of absinthe, the absinthe, the face of the absinthe is life force, energy, and matter. Now, if you've got a life force, it's immaterial, and it's got all those laws in it, and the laws act on the energy, and then, you know, that depends on speed and heat and all kinds of things, because the energy's got all that in it. That's its attribute set. So you've got life force with its attribute set, which will contain all the laws, and then you've got the energy with its attribute set, you know, and then, of course, because the energy has got such a wide attribute set, that could account for, um, you know, matter being whatever. Because it's basically the mating of the life force and the energy together. All right? And that sounds pretty logical. So then we run it over to two. Is there a better contra argument? And let's pretend for the sake of argument that, well, you know, that's pretty all-inclusive. Not really anything comes to mind. Then we come to number three. Is there anything that's mutually exclusive? Okay, it can't be in two places at the same time. Um, how are you going to have life and non-life be in two places at once? Okay. It's either was alive and dead, or was always dead, or was always alive, 
or is alive now and can die later. then we get rid of the at once problem. Okay, well, that's not so bad. But then I get to number four, which is contrary evidence. Well, I got a problem. Because how do I explain personhood? You could say, okay, well, personhood is part of life force. Well then, if personhood is part of life force, then that means that the life force is personal. Uh-oh, now we're talking God. Because how can I exist as a finite person if there's not a personhood in the life force to make me? So let's say we ignore that. All right, then we get to Five, which is something contradicting. All right. Well, what's contradicting is that there's all kinds of immaterial things that don't seem to have anything to do with any of those three things, unless the life force is personal. See, the, if the life force is personal in a stasis, I can account for timelessness. But if the life force is not personal, then how do I account for timelessness? If there's time, there's timelessness, and we know that there's some element to timelessness, because the universe is finite. So I would have to be then saying that, yeah, okay, the life force is a stasis, but I'd also have to be saying it's infinite and timeless. That, that's going to get us into some problems. Mm -hmm.